Well, hello everybody. I'm so happy to be back here with you at Swickley Library for story time. And uh, let's get started, okay? First, we're gonna go quietly for a hello song. Hello everybody and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hello everybody and how are you? How are you today? Okay, you ready to put on your loud voice? We can be loud in the library today. Hello, everybody, and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hello, everybody, and how are you? How are you today? Good job. Okay, check all your body parts. Make sure you brought them with you. Start at the top. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Head, Shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Okay, you know what we do next. Speed it up, let's go. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Get yourselves in. Hey, where are these things? Our fingers. Let's count them. Make sure they're all here. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yay! Give them a little finger wave. Now we're going to sing them a song. One little, two little, three little fingers, four little, five little, six little fingers, seven little, eight little, nine little fingers, ten fingers on our hands. Okay, get your pointers, get your thumbs, turn one upside down, we start down real low, four. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Good job. All right, so today's theme is rocks because I just love rocks and I hope you do too. We're gonna start out here with our first one called Charlotte and the Rock by Stephen Martin. Here's Charlotte. She's trying to play with the ball with her bunny, but she doesn't look very happy with that. Charlotte Gray wanted a pet. She didn't care what kind of a pet. A dog, a cat, a hamster, even a pig would do. So on her sixth birthday, Charlotte's parents bought her a, a pet rock. It says you rock. She looks a little disappointed, doesn't she? It wasn't quite what Charlotte had in mind, but she tried to remain positive. The rock, after all, was a good listener. It was also quiet and easy to train. Stay. And it was hypoallergenic, which was good for Grandma Glennis, who was allergic to almost everything. But as with any pet, some things proved difficult. Rocks were no fun. Look, she has to pull the rock up the hill, and then guess what? <gasps> really not fun, because it rolls fast down there. The rock's lack of appetite was annoying. Have you ever done that? Put the food that you didn't like under the table for the dog or cat to eat? Well, a rock can't eat that food. It was not much help getting her out of trouble at school. You said, what ate your homework? Asked Charlotte's teacher. She's pointing to the rock. But soon, Charlotte and the rock became best friends. They played games. They pretended to be superheroes. They read comic books. They even went swimming. One day, a neighbor walking her dog asked, what's your pet's name? Dennis, said Charlotte proudly. We chose it together. So look, they threw a rock, the rock out of the window 
and whatever square it landed on would be its name, there's Dennis. Charlotte loved her pet so, so, so very much, but she couldn't help wishing that she could, that the rock could love her back. Charlotte patted her rock and let out a sigh. At bedtime that night, Charlotte kissed her rock goodnight and fell fast asleep. Dennis, however, couldn't sleep. Crack! He knew Charlotte needed a hug. So look, the rock opened up and out came something. A big hug. Look, he's wrapped all around Charlotte. A dinosaur wasn't quite what Charlotte's parents had in mind, but they tried to remain positive. After all, Dennis was a great listener, pretty good at hide and seek, and easy to train. Here he is, trained to eat the food under the table. Well, sort of. He got all tangled up in the yard. That was a fun book, wasn't it? Next we have Ed and Kip by Kay Charles. Monkey dropped a rock. Ed rolled it to Kip. Kip rolled it to Ed. Ouch! Ed kicked the rock and it rolled into a cave. Uh-oh. It rolled out. A big, big bug came out. I was taking a nap, he said. He was mad. Can we play? Ed rolled the rock to the bug. You will play with me? He asked. Bug rolled it back. It rolled far. It rolled into the water. Splash. Oh, oh, no. Ed and Kip slid down. They went in the water. Our rock. Big head came out. It was a crocodile. Help! Help! Ed and Kip were scared. Crocodile opened wide. And in jumped Bug. He poked. He bit. Crocodile was surprised. Bug jumped out. Crocodile watched Bug. Ed and Kip threw in the rock. Crocodile bit hard, crunch, ow. Ed and Kip ran home, bug rode. Monkey dropped a log, more fun. Back to my nap, said bug. So there they are playing with the block, doing handstands, holding it up on their noses, and falling asleep. What a long day. Thank you for listening. It's time for shaker eggs. Get your shakers, warm them up. Shake them quiet and loud and quiet and loud. One more time, quiet and loud and then where'd it go? Where is shaker? Where is shaker? Here I am, here I am. Hopping on your head, hopping on your head. Run away, run away. Where is Shaker? Where is Shaker? Here I am, here I am. Rolling on your shoulder, rolling on your shoulder. Run away, run away. Where is Shaker? Where is Shaker? Here I am, here I am. Bouncing on your belly, bouncing on your belly. Run away, run away. Where is Shaker? Where is Shaker? Here I am, here I am. 
knocking on your knee, knocking on your knee. Run away, run away. Where is Shaker? Where is Shaker? Here I am, here I am. Tapping on your toe, tapping on your toe. Run away, run away. Good job, Shaker Cheer. All right, you ready to go to Kentucky? We go three times. Here we go, first time. We're going to Kentucky, we're going to the fair, to see the senorita with the flower in her hair. So shake it, baby, shake it, shake it if you can. Shake it like a milkshake and pour it in a can. Shake it at the bottom, shake it at the top. Shake it all around and run until we holler stop. Second time. We're going to Kentucky, we're going to the fair, to see the senorita with the flower in her hair. So shake it, baby, shake it, shake it if you can. Shake it like a milkshake and pour it in a can. Shake it at the bottom, shake it at the top. Shake it all around the run until we holler stop. Okay, last time, third one. We're going to Kentucky, we're going to the fair, to see the senorita with the flower in her hair. So shake it, baby, shake it, shake it if you can. Shake it like a milkshake and pour it in a can. Shake it at the bottom, shake it at the top. Shake it all around and round and around and round and round and round one big time around until we holler stop yay good job okay we're back here for book three this is called a chip off the old block by jody jensen shaper and some of you may have traveled and noticed that we're going to be visiting some national landmarks that involve rocks throughout our country and here are some pictures of them Rocky was part of a great big family. Tons of his relatives were rock stars. He loved when his parents told him about the most remarkable ones. Uncle Gibraltar ruled over massive ships and huge oceans. Aunt Etna could put on a light show like no one else. And great grandma Half Dome lived just a stone's throw away. I want to do something important too, said Rocky. But you're just a pebble, said his mom. A chip off the old block, said his dad. But inside, Rocky was a boulder. He was little, but he knew he could do big things. That night, after his parents went to bed, Rocky made his plan. I'll join my cousin and become part of one of the most amazing formations on earth. So there he jumped and he bounced. And the next morning, Rocky hopped a ride to Arizona. He landed with a thunk. Rocky was just settling in with his cousin, the wave, when a strong wind whisked him away. Whoa! Dude, shouted his cousin, way to catch some air. Rocky tossed and tumbled, and when he landed, he noted a piece of him had broken off. Oh no, I hope I'm still big enough to make a difference. Rocky was smaller, but he remembered another relative who stood tall. So he caught a ride to Wyoming. Rocky landed with a thud. It's hard to see from a distance, but there the eagle is dropping him. And he landed on top. He had almost anchored himself to his towering cousin when a storm rolled in and washed him away. Whoosh! Help! Rocky gurgled. Enjoy the ride, Rocky, his cousin yelled back. It was clear the two of them did not share the same sediment. Rocky swooped and bounced until he hit a tree, thwack, and landed on a car. But he wasn't giving up. Cars driving away and Rocky's attached to the side. I know I can still matter, he said. I can be big with my cousins in Texas. After a long trip south, 
Rocky landed with a plop. So he left the car and here he is at Dinosaur Valley State Park. I'll safeguard these ancient sauropod tracks, he said. Rocky was doing a great job until an armadillo sent him skipping. It was the armadillo and just packed him away. Rocky was disappointed, but he was still ready to roll. He set his sights on South Dakota. Rocky bumped and bounced all the way to Mount Rushmore. He landed with a plunk. I may be tiny, but I can still rock a souvenir stand. He was surveying his surroundings when he overheard a worker. Sorry, folks, park's closed. Lincoln's nose is cracked. Rocky was crushed. He had traveled so far, searched so hard, lost so much mass. Now I'll never be great but like my relatives. He looked up. Something about that majestic mountain reminded him of what he was made of. Cousin Rushmore may be monumental, but everybody needs a little help sometimes. Rocky hitched a ride to the top. He climbed out for a better look and jumped. Rock and roll! Rocky dove over Lincoln's hair, somersaulted past Lincoln's forehead, and surfed between Lincoln's eyebrows, then landed blink, in the crack in Lincoln's nose. It was a perfect fit. I did it. I did something important. I saved Abraham Lincoln. Solid, said his cousin. Workers hugged, reporters snapped pictures, and Mount Rushmore opened as usual, all thanks to Rocky the little pebble that wouldn't be taken for granted. Here's something that I didn't know. If you look at the true stuff at the end of the book, it says that, um, that it really does happen that Mount Rushmore uh, rocks wear out and have to be patched up a little bit. So I thought this was kind of a silly story, but it's actually a true story. So there you have it, chip off the old block. So here's a book that I like. It's about rock collecting and it's a nonfiction book and you might want to check this out sometime. But the reason that I brought it is to show you this rock is called granite. And I just wanted to share with you that, you know, sometimes we make things that look like things in nature. So my pants kind of look like granite like that. So I thought that you might enjoy having some rock adventures of your own. And this is a rock that I've had for a long, long time. Uh, I was pretty, pretty much a young girl when I got this and I painted a rainbow on the one side. So sometimes it's on my desk and it's up with the rainbow. And sometimes I turn it over and just like to see the rock and the the patterns on the rock. So you might go out and look in your yard or in a park or somewhere and see if there's a rock that calls out to you to join us. Thank you very much. See you next time.